Your company contributes to $250 million loss per day due to death by PowerPoint. $250 million loss per day. So everyone who is presenting here today, everyone who has something to present, whether at school, uh, university, or workplace, wants to perform well. You've been looking for the best color for your PowerPoint slides, the best introduction to your speech, and the best story to tell, which will allow you to paint the most wonderful picture of your idea to your audience. But how many times have you been in a situation when you read those four bullet points on the screen instead of listening to the speaker? And how many times you saw the exactly the same format on the slide despite there being different speakers or conversation topics. I know I've seen at least four presentations in the last few months which had exactly the same PowerPoint-provided format. And how many times have you been in an event, sitting down, looking at the speaker, looking at the slides, changing one after another, and thinking to yourself, how many more slides will there be? <laughs> And uh, suddenly the speaker comes off the presenting mode and you quietly say to yourself, oh no, 41 more to go. <laughs> I've been in a similar situation when I had an opportunity to attend a meeting where a business did a presentation to a customer about the product that this customer was interested in purchasing. So the goal of the meeting was one, to talk about that product. Now, can anyone in this audience guess how many slides this business prepared for this particular presentation? Can anyone shout me a number? <laughs> Very close. Yeah. Uh, it was 130 slides. Now, guess on which slide the actual product was discussed? Can anyone shout it? <laughs> That would have been a horrible present, yeah. <laughs> um, it was slide number 80. Now, do you think it was effective presentation? Probably not. But that information, those extra slides had to be included just in case someone in that meeting wanted to have a history about the company or wanted to actually dive in into very nitty-gritty stuff about that product. Well, in this situation, at least the company and the customer were both in the same room. They were able to observe each other's body language and decide if they should move to that slide number 80 sooner. And in this situation, it just shows that some of the tools that we use today to give presentations does not necessarily cater those conversations that we're intending to have with our audiences. But how about the times when we cannot observe our audiences. How about the times when we deliver what I call passive presentations? It's the times when we cannot observe someone's body language, we cannot give more information or answer questions on the spot, we cannot use our intonation, body language, or facial expressions to make our messages more powerful. These type of passive presentations are very common in business environment and by sending an email or interactive PDF document or PowerPoint slide, we are still delivering messages to our audiences with the content that we created but without actually being physically there. It's clear that passive presentations do not have the same effect as presentations we see today. But these passive presentations are not as effective, but an example of one of them is a company that I discovered during my research of how businesses communicate in a passive way. So I came across this technology company who gives technological innovations and solutions in the healthcare market. And one of the ways they try to communicate with their potential customers is through interactive PDF document. Now, what they did is they provided a long document of pictures and links, and after going through 49 pages of that document, I discovered that the actual solutions and innovations that I was very curious about of learning about were actually in the last 15 pages. 
And whilst I was not intending to purchase any of those services or products, I asked myself, if I was a customer, would I be willing to spend a lot of time exploring a very long document to discover that the a few solutions that I might buy is uh, in the last 15 pages? Well, probably not. <laughs> Let's not pretend that PowerPoint is not a tool that is not effective. Let's not pretend that it's, we shouldn't use it. It is effective if we have time and skills to use it. And what works for businesses does not necessarily what works for people. And people like you and me today are those who are receiving those presentations. Maybe PowerPoint or an interactive PDF document is, like in the case of this company, are the tools that we use because they are convenient, because these are the tools that are part of the corporate culture that we work in. Or maybe these tools are the only options that we think we have. But by using these tools, especially in passive presentations, is when we may truly miss a chance to share our ideas and we may even alter the outcomes that we're aiming to achieve through our presentations. One of the most prominent trends in today's society that affect that inefficient use of the tools like PowerPoint is fasting pace of life. And still 89% of people use PowerPoint for their presentations. And half of its users take around eight hours to deliver one single presentation. So imagine you have to write three of them in the week. And the results are, we'll usually only give the first 10 minutes of their attention to your presentation. And four in five people shift their focus onto something else whilst you present. Another trend is embedding links in our presentations. And people usually do that because, well, we don't want to overwhelm people with that 130-page slide deck or because we want to include some videos in it, so we upload different links to, to kind of, that will direct us to those videos. But let me ask you this. How many times you actually clicked on multiple links that you received in the PowerPoint presentation? And how many times you actually know that by clicking link number one, two, and three, you're actually going to receive the information that you're looking for? What, what stat statistics tells us is that often people don't open those links because of time pressure, inconvenience, or simple because organizations block those links for security reasons. It is a shame that we might truly miss the chance to deliver powerful messages just because we're so pressured to make our presentations interactive. And at the same time, we don't have a lot of time to create those presentations. So we have only one option is to embed hyperlinks in PowerPoint. The consequences of presentations and inefficient use of these tools can be many from previously mentioned attention retention issue to making our presentations not as inclusive as we want them to be. And all of these issues contribute to that $250 million loss per day. But that number does not take into consideration passive presentations, meaning that the moment you send that PowerPoint document, you're at risk not just miscommunicating your message or confusing your audience or even damaging your or your company's reputation, but also one bad presentation may affect the overall outcome of it. We live in an age of touch holograms, virtual and augmented reality, yet we still miss a chance to deliver amazing interactive presentations in circumstances where we cannot devote our full time and attention. Let's jump from the conversation about PowerPoint onto something else. And let me ask you this. Do you remember the maps that you learned in geography lessons or history lessons? Or maybe you remember the formulas that you learned in your finance course? Maybe you heard a speech a few years back and it's stuck with you since then. Or maybe you remember the time you tried to ride a bicycle for the first time and trying really hard not to fall off it. 
why these questions are relevant. Well, going back to presentations and PowerPoint, to truly understand how people and our audiences remember the information we deliver to them, we need to understand how we learn. So if you remember one or few of these moments I just described, it may indicate what type of learner you are. And according to Varuk Questionnaire, 34% of people have single learning preference, whether it is visual, auditory, reading, writing, or kinesthetic. And PowerPoint mainly caters first three. And when PowerPoint is delivered in a passive way, it only caters visual and reading, writing types of learners. Well, why is it important? Well, because only 1.9% of people are visual learners. Only 4.2% of people are reading and writing types of learners. A combination of two is 0.5% of people, meaning that when you send that PowerPoint document, it mainly caters 6.6% of your audience. 6.6%. What does that mean? Meaning that this particular audience will quicker take that information in and remember it for longer. And for people like myself, who are more like a kinesthetic type of learner who learn much better by doing things, I might struggle to remember that information in long term. However, what if you could create presentations that could be delivered in a passive way, but at the same time, they would be inclusive? What if you could answer questions of your audience and provide additional information without actually sending a 130-page slide deck? And what if you could deliver presentations almost anywhere without actually any very complex technology on hand? Well, except a phone and a laptop, of course. Well, the tools I'm about to show you are just a few alternatives to what we can use instead of PowerPoint. And you probably think it's something like VR presentations, but it's not because that would require all of us to buy a headset today. What I'm suggesting are not tools like Prezi or Tableau. It's tools that have been around for quite a while, but they're still yet to become a standard practice in today's presenting market, let's say. So one of the first tools I would like to share with you is immersive customer engagement platforms. And on the screen, you can see just one of many examples of them. This is an animated version of it. Uh, there can be a real-life representation. So imagine you have a business, and as a stakeholder of your business, I want to find out more about what you offer. So what do I do? Well, I open my laptop and I open one of these platforms and I am welcome and I talk with AI-driven avatar, which kind of tells me what I want to do over here on this platform, what kind of problem I'm facing. And this platform will be like a real-life representation of the world in which you operate in, meaning that I can see the world as you see it. What do I do? Well, I decide to explore it in more detail. So I click on one of the buildings and I can see what kind of things you do in that area on a very high level. But let's say I want to explore it in more detail, meaning I need additional information. So I click on one of the rooms and suddenly I'm immersed in that 360 environment which I can look around and play around it, click on different items and receive information that exactly I am looking to receive. So let's say I want to explore a laptop because I'm interested about computers. I click on it and I can see information that is presented in multiple ways, from video, text, pictures, or even in a form of a questionnaire. And let's say I want to read it when I go home. So I download it and I take it on the train home and read it for like an hour and a half journey that I have. The possibilities with tools like that, and again, this is just one of many tools that are existing today, are endless because you can present exactly what you want. It can grow with you, you can update it, meaning that you don't need to spend on average those eight hours creating new presentation each time. And what's great is that with these platforms, you can kind of use it not just in the passive presentations, but also when you give face-to-face -face presentations.
Such an immersive technology allows users to absorb information up to four times faster. It allows them to better emotionally connect with the content and almost eliminates the danger of your audience disengaging after 10 minutes. 360 technologies do not require headsets. And according to PwC, presentations that were delivered in this manner 75% of people felt more inclusive. Similar examples of such presentations are emerging in immersive classrooms or real estate. Many of you here today may not be marketing entrepreneurs or working for organizations that could implement such tools. But there are certain kind of universal aspects of this tool that could apply for all. For example, a map which represents a journey that you will take your audience through when you present, or an immersive view, which will allow your audience to see your world as you see it, immersing you in that environment and produce lifelike experiences. These kind of immersive platforms will also allow people to explore content, not through just visual aid, but also by seeing text, audio, and other interactive tools embedded in them. But besides customer engagement platforms, another route to more interactive presentations is through gamification. You may choose your presentation to be part of a game. For example, your audience selects an issue and they discover a solution as part of your presentation. We often use games as part of our presentations, and we often use props when we deliver face-to-face presentations. So why not take them digital? These presentations, differently from aforementioned immersive platforms, work very well in education. So for example, imagine you are revising for exams because let's say you're a university student and instead of rereading your notes for the hundredth of time or rewatching recorded lectures and seminars, you play one video. You play that video and let's say you're at the point of learning about nine types of corporate culture. And before the video reveals what those types are, it stops and asks you to link definitions with descriptions. Now, each time you replay that video, it stops you at a different point, meaning that it encourages you to recall the information. What's great about these types of gamified technologies is that you'll be enabling users to better connect with the content. You will motivate learners to push themselves for the best results. Also, you will allow positive competition, but most importantly, you will enable people with different learning needs and different learning types to participate in learning. These types of presentations and digital gamification are very often, we might see it in games for little children, but it's yet to become a very standard practice in inclusive learning. And finally, if you're delivering online, or face-to-face presentations, there's one tool that everyone can use. And you probably think that it's something very groundbreaking, but it's, uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but uh, it's not. It's just whiteboards. So similarly to immersive platforms, you can alter the content whilst you're presenting. And this type of method was recognized as a very good method for presenting to kinesthetic types of learners. Based on business management consultant corporation, the majority of people who are receiving presentations via whiteboard were thinking that it's the most effective way of receiving information. And usually people retain 14% more information if it's delivered in a whiteboard. People may choose an alternative method to whiteboard because they're not familiar on how to use, for example, a different version of it online or because of habit and convenience. The mentioned immersive tool, gamified videos or whiteboards are just few of many tools that are alternative to PowerPoint. But the presence of these tools does not mean that we need to change everything that we do today. As you can see, 
very ironically, I'm presenting with PowerPoint today. But by making your presentations more immersive, if you include more text, moving images, as well as animations, you can may make your presentations more inclusive. We all know that rule that one size does not fit all. And there are no exceptions when it comes to presenting tools. But I want to leave you with this question. Do you think that in the future there will be one tool that all of us will be able to use in our presentations that will fit everyone? Thank you.